We're full steam ahead with the renovations of our stone house here in Portugal and it's starting to really feel like our own. The terracotta tones of the new floors really speak to my African roots and I expect that this little home that used to be an animal barn will turn out to be a really fun mix of our eclectic travel inspired backgrounds. But it's not all terracotta and tiling. This is farm life and there's always other work to be done. John sent me this clip on WhatsApp as we're still in Zimbabwe. And let's just say it was a very good Slip job that Tara was on a different continent. And you were mine. Take me back to garden. Sing me back to the garden We're walking hand in hand My eyes were filled with wonder My heart was filled with peace Lost in the mystery It's all that I could see Sing me back to the garden Good morning, everybody. I have just come up to the tree house, um, which I've been working on, well, the last couple of days, actually. It's starting to look pretty good. Looks like that now. Hopefully the boys will be chuffed. Um, but I'm up here today for a different reason. Above me, right there. <laughs> Let me get that right. Above me anyway, this tree is dead and it's huge so in light of the recent storms and the winds that have been coming through here over the last few days i think it's time we take that down now i've got a chainsaw and i could very well take it down myself but right here is an electrical cable a big one too and right there is the dead tree a big one too. So what I don't really want to be doing is chopping that tree down myself and having it fall on the cables. You know, that would just be an absolute disaster. So I've asked Senor Agostinho, Joao's here as well, to come and give me a hand and we're going to try and take it down without destroying too much stuff around it. It's not going to be easy, I'm sure of that. Hello folks, it's been a while and I just wanted to say a really, really big thank you first of all to John for holding down the fort while we were away and to all of you for keeping him company and for the support you've shown on the videos he's put together and the work he's done while I've been away. Just so, so proud of him. So thank you all so much. One of the things that we do on YouTube is obviously work with loads of really, really interesting sponsors and we get introduced to products that I didn't even know existed and this is one of those. This is my lumen. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath and using its incredible app gives you tailored recommendations and nutrition plans to help you reach your metabolic goals, be it weight loss, better sleep, stress management, or just better metabolic health and well-being. Your metabolism is your body's engine and it is so important that it's functioning at its best. And one of the most important things is that your metabolism is super flexible and I'm learning tons about this at the moment, but it's all affected by things like your monthly cycle, what time you finished eating last night, whether or not you had more carbs yesterday or um, you had a bad night's sleep. And I see that every morning when I take my reading on my lumen, I can see exactly what the effect of yesterday's activities and sleep etc had on my metabolic reading in the morning and it's helping me guide my choices it's helping me kind of be a lot more conscious of what i do in my day and how that's going to affect the engine of my body this little device is the easiest thing to incorporate in your day it's so compact it's easy to travel with but all you do is breathe in hold your breath and exhale through the machine and then it gives you your metabolic reading. So if you'd like to get your hands on one of these and also get to know your own metabolic score, there's a QR code on the screen here. Just scan it with the camera on your phone or use the unique link in our description below. You'll also get $100 off your very own Lumen, which is a pretty massive discount on this piece of kit. So I'd make the most of it if I were you. I hope you love it as much as I do and I'm super excited to see where this kind of knowledge 
takes us in our overall health and well-being. I think that that tree is really big. Look at that. What's the plan, Joel? Yeah. So what we can't do is take the tree down on top of the tree house. Obviously, that would be bad. That's the tree there. Still looking pretty good condition, but I just don't want that wind to come and blow it, knock it over and hit that. And it's frustratingly, it's quite literally a metre, metre and a half inside our property. So it's kind of, well, it is 100% my responsibility to look after it, to make sure it doesn't fall down. The other frustrating thing is it's right next to an old cork oak and the cork oak branches right here are in the way of that tree falling down in the easiest and simplest way, which would be douche, that way towards the house. You see the house, the white bit in the in the corner there, and onto the onto the road. So tricky. So we put the cable for from the another pine tree. Yeah. We're going to go. Okay. Which way? Which way are we going to pull it? This Drop way. it. Okay. All right. We're picking up a cable. That's probably a good start. That's a heavy cable. Stuff like this makes me just a little bit nervous. Look how close it is to those electrical cables. Can you see them? Right there, the tree. And that's the rain, everybody. So the cable is going around this tree here from the tree that's the tree that we've got that needs to come down this one it's going round that tree and down in that direction are you are you attaching that to it uh, the tractor Joel? yeah okay let me put some wood um on the inside of that cable so that it doesn't hurt the tree let's put this siesta there we go we we don't want to try well we want to try and mitigate any damage to trees other trees bloody hell this is this is not nice such a tight 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 space is um is Senor Agostinho, is he confident that it's going to be okay? He is. Great. Okay. I'm not. All right, so the cable's running there to the tractor. Senor Agostinho is just uh, lining it all up. Oh my goodness. I wish the boys were here to see this. They're currently still in Africa. Back within the next couple of days, I can't wait. Really, really miss them being around, especially in the evenings, you know, during the day when I'm busy working, it's kind of okay, but during the evenings, that, that time which is often so hard, you know, you just want to put them in bed and, and have some time with, with your wife, with Tara. Okay, it's all tight. There's the cable. Um, yeah, I'm really, really missing that. Putting the boys to bed, bath time, that kind of stuff. Look at that though. Isn't it cool? Lovely little tree house. The plan is also to build a uh, sand pit right here. And as soon as this tree comes down, Joao and I will be looking at just putting a framework. And then I think Mario's coming maybe tomorrow, next day to get some sand. I'm hoping to have that all ready for when the boys get home. Sand pit, tree house, brilliant. We are all locked in. Is 
so we're well into April now. Um, I don't know when this video will be released, but we are actually well into April right now. And this time last year, the sun was shining. It was blazing 25, 30 degrees almost every single day. And actually, from the beginning of April last year, all the way through pretty much to October, we only had a couple of days of rain. So the fact that it's still raining right now, I kind of, I'm, I'm really okay with it. I just wish it would be a bit bit warmer, you know. Um, but if it can keep raining just a little bit every, every couple of days, I'm delighted with that. Um, it just means hopefully at the other end, we're good. You know, we, we don't run out of water or we don't have any water problems because, of course, the bio pool that we're putting together at the moment, we still haven't been able to continue work with that because the amount of water, the amount of rain that we've been getting has just made it impossible to get to that field. Senor Agostini has got his chainsaw out. All right, I am so uncomfortable with this. I'm going to get out of the way. Hey, Zuel, well. are you good here or do you want to come and get out of the way? You're good. He's good. In Finland, when I lived in Finland, I used to cut down a whole... Well, I didn't cut down a whole bunch of trees, but... Cutting down trees, especially this size, I've done it, you know. Um, in Finland, that's quite a small tree, to be honest. Um, but because of those electric cables, just not into it. Get the professionals in, that's what I say. Hear you all asking how did the tree die? I have got absolutely no clue how it died. All right, well, that's Senor Agostino saying he's going to down the side of the table. Stand away a bit for me, buddy. Joel, come and stand away, yeah? We don't know what I... Well... Joel, come away. Dude, Joel. but it's hit other trees. <laughs> Flipping heck, that was close. <laughs> How close was that? <laughs> Let's have a look. Wow, that's a huge relief. That's what we wanted to see. Intact, perfectly. And there's the tree. What a professional, love it. shaky after all of that. All right, let's go down here and have a look how, how it felt. That's a really big tree. Okay, so that's the end of the tree, all dead and gnarly. 
it looks bad, but it's not because that, that right there, that's a cork oak. So that's not branches that came from our tree. In fact, that cork oak probably stopped it from rolling a bit. Now, the question is, what do we do with all of that wood? That's a huge tree. My hand is basically the same size as, I don't know, a small giant. Um, because I'm seven foot tall. There it is. Well, there we go. That's my foot on the edge of it. And I take a size 20. That's also not true. Anyway, big tree. Love it. It's kind of one of those things that you don't think about when you buy a property, when you buy a big piece of land is how you manage that land and how you look after it. Um, you know, that's just one of those jobs that you've got to do. Um, I'm not sure how much it's going to cost me <laughs> for Senor Agostinho, but I wouldn't imagine. I mean, it's anywhere near the price of, of what it would cost if that tree would have come down in one of those storms. It looks like it would have been good for another few years, to be honest. The inside of it isn't particularly rotten, so I don't know why it died, but um, better to be safe than sorry, I say. All right. right. Senor Agostinho is coming down with his track to the other side. Oh, that's nice. Um, the question is now, what do we do with a tree like that? One of the ideas I had was to chop it up into pieces of wood and build something out of it. But that, that's, that's kind of almost a false economy. That would require the sawmill coming here, picking it up, taking it back to the sawmill and chopping it into pieces. Um, you know, I, I've seen online you can make fancy things out of chainsaws, but I'm not really that, that uh, well, frankly, I don't have enough time to do something like that. Um, but that's a lot of wood right there. I think for now, it might be the best plan is to chop it into small pieces or smaller pieces and, and hand it to the kids to play on, you know, a balancing beam or something like that. Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Great. Joao was just saying we should roll one of these over this direction here down the side of the treehouse and make steps out of it. That would be fun. So we're going to take one more piece from this tree, put it here, um, and then we'll call it. But you know, that's those pieces of wood. They're, they they are huge. Um, Contextualise. Let's have a look. See whether we've got a piece of wood lying around. Yeah. So this is a piece of two by four. Those are two and a half meter lengths. What have we got here? a lot of two by four right there what do i reckon that's probably 20 20 lengths of two and a half meters two by four another 20 so what would we say 40 lengths of two and a half meters that's 100 meters almost 100 meters yeah 100 meters of two by four in those two logs half meter length of two by four lumber in the in the hardware store what are you talking you're probably talking about five six euros per length so 500 euros worth of wood cut up in the shop that's a lot last piece
we've got one more tree just to chop came down in the storm um just to chop it up on, on tara's veggie garden guys are dude love it so if you've been with us a while you'll know that occasionally <laughs> on this uh on this homestead trees come down in storms um, that's what I tell Tara anyway, because she doesn't like cutting down trees and sometimes trees are just in the way um, and they really rather ought to come down so that we can get a bit more light, especially on the veg garden and some part, some other parts of, um, of the farm. This tree here actually did come down in a storm. It was a dead tree, crashed down one evening. I jumped out of bed. Now, imagine would have happened if that big pine tree would have come down on its own and cut that electrical cable in half. It would have been an absolute, well, I mean, there are some words to describe it, but we'll just say for now, it would have been an absolute disaster. This one didn't matter, thankfully. So this is our one of our plum trees as well. One of the jobs last autumn for me was to prune it and make it look a bit better and a bit healthier. But of course, there wasn't any time we, we didn't get around to it. Can you see it there? It's kind of leaning over. Um, so we'll have to do that this autumn. Right now, it's completely laden with plums, which will be great for Crusoe and Sawyer in about two months time. But this tree right next to it, covered in ivy, that's not helping the fruit trees cause so I think that one might also come down in the storm today as well. Okay this is a cork oak which are protected in Portugal so it's been knocked over as the other tree came down um, so what we're going to try and do now is just prune it back and lift it back into place but it looks a little bit well let's be honest it looks a little bit sad. Shame. I don't know what you can do about that. Might need to get a rope and just for the summer tie it to the pine behind. Hope that it um, finds its legs again. Okay, there it is. Down it comes. That corner's a lot lighter. You can see some of the old bamboo in the back there. That plum tree's really gonna thank us for that.